Okay, hello. Um, Hi, Seth. Can you introduce yourself? Uh, yes, my name's Scott Thornbury, and I am presently the uh, associate professor at the on the MA TESOL program at the New School, run in New York. Although I teach mostly from my home in Barcelona, Spain, teaching online, and I teach face to face on the program in the summer. Uh, and I am also the academic director of a new uh, initiative uh, called the uh, International Teacher Development Institute, which aims to uh, make available teacher training uh, packages online for teachers in a variety of contexts and is about to launch very soon. So that's been my latest uh, uh, interest. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell us, Scott, something interesting, exciting, innovative, whatever, something really great that you've seen at IATEFL this year? I thought actually the best, or well, I mean, not the best, but one of the most, for me, exciting and quite moving was I went to the Hornby Scholars uh, presentation yesterday morning and these are the uh, I think 15 of them uh, young teachers chosen from around the world and given uh, subsidized to attend IATEFL among other things and do a pr short presentation so each of them had about five minutes and they were fantastic I mean they were really well rehearsed but they, there's a certain spontaneity there was a, a genuine uh, enthusiasm for teaching and then wonderful slides of their different contexts and their different interests. It was really, really uh, validating and affirming and I thought and what a wonderful scheme the Hornby scheme is. And I went to that principally because I've been reading about in the latest uh, ELT journal, the, Richard Smith wrote a piece about the history of the Hornby scheme and it, it's just, you can't help but being really actually moved by, and this is all the money from the dictionaries that Hornby wrote, the Oxford uh, Advanced Learners Dictionary, which is ploughed into this really, really worthwhile scheme, so that was great. Uh, okay, finally, you're, you famously got kind of strong feelings about how uh, how teaching could, should, ought to be done, whether or not it should use technology or shouldn't. So can you give us a, a few ideas of how you think technology is used well or badly or how technology is used in language education? Well, I mean, my particular interest in being, well, my particular field being uh, teacher education, I'm okay. actually on a daily basis involved in using technology for teacher education simply through the online teaching that I do. Uh, and this, as I say, this new initiative, the ITDI, is all delivered online. Um, so, I mean, obviously, clearly, and, and, and therefore the reach is absolutely massive, potentially. Uh, so that's the good news. Uh, in terms of language learning, I think the good news is the uh, access and the facilities and the tools that learners have for continuing their ed language education and language use out of class. Uh, and that they, you know, the potential is just massive. Uh, which for me, then, I, uh, you're going to ask me about the negatives, are you? Or you have already? Uh, yeah, they're positive and negative. <laughs> well, though. the negatives are when all that, those wonderful resources, which are so good for outside the classroom, are sort of used in the classroom at the expense of what I think classrooms are really good for, which is the sort of human factor. Mm -hmm. So I, that's all. It's just where, it's not the technologies themselves, it's where and when you use them. And, uh, uh, and so, as I say, I, I do see the potential for continuous learning, autonomous learning through technology, but at the same time I see that it could become, and it can become, it can encroach on the kind of affordances that are available in classrooms. Okay, well, Scott, thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Seth. All the best. It's a pleasure. A pleasure. Oh, Kudaleko, 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 Kudale